God has an encouraging word for you today through the Bible-based teaching of Dr. Don Wilton. Today's message is Wonderful Sign, and we'll be headed to Isaiah chapter 7 in just a moment. As we study God's Word together, connect with us online at tewonline.org or on the phone at 866-899-9673. Now let's open our hearts and God's Word together with Dr. Don Wilson and the Encouraging Word. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Many people, including myself, regard Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 in some ways as the John 3.16 of the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, you read these exact same words in the New Testament, because it is the new covenant. This is the new covenant given in the midst of the old. It was given to a people who were doing everything they possibly could to comply with all the rules and the regulations necessary in order to find favor with God. It was given to a people who were caught up in their church and their religion. It was given to a people in the middle of a battlefield who knew but didn't really fully comprehend or understand. And in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, we read, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. and shall call his name Emmanuel. I want you to just picture this for a minute. Let's let's try and find out what it was that happened back in Isaiah's time that would have caused God to have made this life-changing announcement back then. I've, I've often thought about, and I know you have too, God could have done that um, at, at some other time. Why, why did he choose 750 years before the event actually happened? We cannot comprehend this. God's got the whole world in his hand. From the beginning to the end. In the beginning which we read about in Genesis 1, was God's perfect beginning. That's when it began. Back then, in the beginning. It's when God decided. That's when He created the heavens and the earth. It was His plan. And by the way, if you fast forward through to the book of Revelation, and we see God coming down from heaven, and making his dwelling place on earth among mankind. And we hear him saying, from now on, I make my dwelling place among men. That's God's perfect plan. When is that? When he does. Please forgive the interruption. We'll be back in just a moment studying God's perfect plan. 
Our prayer is that you would allow us to be a part of the plan God has for encouraging you every single day. If you haven't signed up on our website at tewonline.org for the daily encouraging word devotional from Dr. Don, you're missing out. It's easy, it's free, it's online at tewonline.org. That's also the place you'll find wonderful resources like the book Dr. Don Wilson wrote on his time as the pastor of Dr. Billy Graham called Saturdays with Billy. That's there and other resources. And also know this, the phone number on your screen, our website, tewonline.org, is a great place to discover how you are not alone in this situation. We are here for you. God has called us to encourage you. As a matter of fact, at the end of the program, I'm going to tell you about how someone is encouraging us with a wonderful challenge gift. Maybe you're considering getting involved with us financially. Discover more on our website at tewonline.org. Now back to today's great teaching with Dr. Don Wilson. So here we are in Isaiah chapter 7 with this most wonderful verse, and it really is. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So here was Judah in the divided kingdom, and the king's name was Ahaz. You can read about him in the preceding verses and chapters. And King Ahaz was somewhat rather a spikely old chap. And he struggled like everyone. And just to put it down the line, from his kingdom and his seat in Judah, he looked up and he could see the enemy coming against him. And in this case, it came from two fronts, from Syria and from Israel in the divided kingdom. And he knew that he had no power. And so he was given that invitation. Well, why don't you go and ask God for a sign? This sign was to do four things. It has done four things for us. First of all, it fulfilled the promise. What promise? Ahaz knew about the promise. It had to do with the God of his fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And I invite you in your own private study to go back, for example, into Genesis 22, that marvelous account where God tested the obedience, the faith of Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, I want you to take your only son. That story just drives the point of God's uniqueness so strongly into our own heart. It tells us about the uniqueness. This is about the only begottenness of the Son. There is a better sacrifice. This is it. The ultimate Son. What a wonderful Christmas. What was God doing here to Ahaz? He was just fulfilling his promise. He was fulfilling the promise of the covenant that he made with his people. God doesn't go back on his promise, doesn't break his promise, doesn't change his promise. He fulfills his promise. Christmas is the fulfillment of the promise of God. That's why it's such a wonderful Christmas, isn't it? Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This sign, this wonderful sign, it fulfilled the promise of God. But secondly, it identified the person. <laughs> Everything about God's promise is rooted in the person. And there is only one. And his name is Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. The word Emmanuel, by the way, and we know this from Sunday school, is a, an incredible word in the Hebrew text. In its form, I wish I could put it up here for you to see in the Hebrew, wouldn't help many of us, 
But it's really two words that come together. So the first word is the word iman. I-M-M-A-N, transliterated. E-manuel. Iman. I-M-M-A-N. And that word literally translated means with us. If you were speaking to someone who spoke the Hebrew language and you were wanting to say with us, you'd use the word iman, iman. That's what that means. But interestingly enough, that word there has inextricably bound into it not as an attachment. The letters E-L or L, capital E, L. The word L in the Hebrew means God. God with us. Emmanuel. Remember the Hebrew language is written backwards. <laughs> Those of us who studied Advanced Hebrew could never quite get used to going backwards up the page like that. It just never makes sense to a good living southern gentleman. Not even a little bit. Emmanuel, the with us God. Singular. And the word there identifies the oneness, the uniqueness, the awesomeness of the only begottenness of God so loved the world that he gave Emmanuel the one with us is he is God God which God Jesus God identifies God as God not generic God not like there are many gods. Not like moon god, tree god, whale god. God by every other kind of name one can imagine. God Jehovah. Yahweh. The God of our fathers. The root of David. The lineage of David. This is God. Emmanuel. God with us. God came to King Ahaz. What did he do when he gave to him this wonderful sign in the midst of his battle and consternation? He fulfilled the promise of the covenant. He identified the person. But thirdly, he defined the purpose. He defined the purpose. Right here in this one verse, fulfilled in the gospel account of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, the defined purpose of this God with us, all right, just step back into the life of King Ahaz. Yes, this sign given as a sign to Ahaz that Judah would be given a reprieve from the attacks of the Syrians and the Israelites who were coming against God's people back in the time of the divided kingdom, the invaded kingdom. God was going to intervene. This is the sign. I am with you. And I'm far more than king. This was the proof that God would demonstrate His presence through the deliverance of His people in total and complete fulfillment of his covenant. I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those that curse you and in you will all the peoples of the earth be blessed. You're a blessing because you're God's people 
I bless you in the name of Jesus today because you're God's people. This is the authority in the name of Jesus. This was the beginning of the historical demonstration of God's purpose, the ultimate protection. This is the great I am. You know, when one thinks about God's presence, His presence is replete throughout the Scriptures. I invite you again to do a study on your own. I share with you just six illustrations to validate, not that God needs validation, but six illustrations of God's defined purpose, the one who is ever present with His people, God with His people, Emmanuel, God with us. Go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Here they are. There they are. Adam and Eve. What a twosome. Back there in the day, where was God? With them. Walking around in the garden. Well, there came a time when sin brought to bear upon those same covenant people, the children of Israel, the ultimate consequence, and they found themselves in bondage in Egypt. And God once again delivered them and through the hand of His servant Moses, led them across the sea and out into the wilderness where they wailed and chit-chatted among themselves and complained and mumbled, groaned and grumbled, God said, well, I'll keep you here for just a couple more years. I'll try and show you who I am. And right there in Exodus chapter 13 and verse 21, God's presence never departed from them. The Bible tells us that by day they were led by a pillar of cloud. There was God. And at night, when all seemed lost, there was a pillar of fire that led them. God's presence, His protection, this God with us. Fast forward to the ascension of the Lord Jesus, having fulfilled His mission upon this earth. And right there, prior to the cross, Matthew 28 and verse 20, I will be with you always. My presence with you, in you, for you. I am who I am. I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the age. How would that happen when Jesus, the Christ himself, this Jesus born of a virgin, when he left and went back to be seated at the right hand of the Father? Well, he told us. He told us all about it in the fifth illustration. In John chapter 14 and verse 16, Jesus said to all his disciples, he said, don't be concerned because I'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. And when he comes, he's going to come in you, fill you, walk alongside of you, bless you, guide you into all truth, convict you, convince you, point you, help you, encourage you, discipline you. I'm with you. I'm not leaving you. What, till the end of the age? Well, why don't we go to the end of the age then? Let's prove God, shall we? Or what he said in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Maybe he'd forgotten it was such a long time ago. Well, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3, you read those great verses, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and the old earth had passed away. There was now no separation. Gravity was gone. There's no difference between up there and down here. Everything belongs to God. And it's right there at that point 
that God gives us that beautiful picture of the city of God. Yerushalem. Yerushalem. The city of God coming down from God where he now is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me coming down to this earth and what does he say in the third verse of the 21st chapter now oh you asked a question about I will be with you even unto the end of the age of which there shall be no end now the dwelling of God is with men. There's Emmanuel, God with us. And he will live with them. Now just think about this. Like most of us, Ahaz probably sat there and was somewhat consternated, perhaps somewhat a little affronted. I mean, think of the audacity to come before the king and tell him, regardless of whether he asked for a sign or not, God still is on his throne. And this will be the sign for you. You find that babe wrapped in swaddled cloths. Yeah, those same little bandages that you wrap up those little sheep that you've been birthing all this time to send over there to the temple to do what Ahaz thought was the way that you got to God. Uh Uh-uh. He said, no, no, just lay down your little sheep right now. It's Emmanuel, Jesus. He's the one. He's the sign. This will be the sign. Just go. Look, see. You'll find the baby wrapped in swaddle cloths, lying in a manger. Joy to the world. He's the one. This is Jesus. So, what is this wonderful sign that we read about, that we know about? Well, it fulfilled the promise of God. It identified the person, Jesus. It defined the purpose that he would be with us, present with us, protecting us forever, like he always said, like he always did. But fourth, this sign invites the people. It's an invitation to all the people that all the world might know. It it invites all the people. Did you know you're not excluded from this? If you're hearing this today, it's you. It's me. You can know him. You can receive him. You can have this God, this Jesus, with you, in you, for you. And watch this. Never leave you. So while you live, all of that, this sign is yours. And when you die, keep going. That's what eternal life is in Christ. That's the joy of knowing Christ. Would you bow your heads with me today? Do you know Jesus? Oh, he's worth knowing. You don't consider God. You accept him. You just accept him. You just do what Abraham did. You obey him by faith. God said, take your son, go sacrifice him. Abraham said, right, God. 
And the Bible says that Jesus came to this earth for you and for me, and he invites you and me to accept him. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Would you trust Jesus as your Savior and Lord, give your life to him? Perhaps today you'd pray this prayer. Dear God, I know that Jesus is alive. I put my faith and trust in him today. I receive him into my heart and I confess and repent of my sin in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed along with Dr. Wilton, Dr. Don has some wonderful free resources he wants you to have if you'll call the number on your screen. We would love to walk with you to encourage you to pray for you as you grow in your faith. You know, we have some opportunities to grow right now to double the amount of people listening to this Bible-based teaching of Dr. Don Wilton because of a wonderful challenge gift. If you've ever thought about it, visit our website, tewonline.org, and discover who we are because you may be encouraging us by considering giving to the ministry. One of the reasons that we started the Encouraging Word broadcast ministry is to take this biblical message of encouragement from God's Word not just across our country, but all around the world to people who need joy and hope that can only be found in the Lord Jesus. Will you help me with this? I really need your help. I can't do it by myself. And I'd like to ask you to become my partner in the Encouraging Word ministry. If you make a monthly investment as an encourager, you can help me broadcast these life-transforming messages from God's Word, not just here in the United States of America, but with podcasting, online, radio, and television, literally all around the world. As Dr. Don said, we can't do this alone. If the Lord's leading you to give, whatever that amount might be, it was 120 people giving $2 a week when we began back in 1956. Today, you might could give $2 a week, you might could give $200 a week. Whatever the Lord leads you to, would you give us a call? 866-899-WORD is the phone number. Jot it down, store it in your cell, or visit us online at tewonline.org in this challenge gift opportunity. We could double the amount of people that would hear about the love of Jesus with your help. Wow, God has done incredible things again this year through the Encouraging Word broadcast ministry. Do you know that over 135,000 people have called us telling us what this ministry means to them in their spiritual life? And so many are coming to know Jesus. A friend has just given a $200,000 challenge gift to this ministry, and we are asking, as he is asking, that our listeners will give an additional $300,000 to this ministry by December 31st so that God's word can continue to go out across the world. In London recently, someone came up to me and said, thank you for the encouraging word and for what it means. Would you help me do this? If all of us participated, even at two to three to four dollars each, God will help us to reach this goal together. Yes, we can do it.